Okay, so we are going to go through section 2.2 today. Um, important note that our next class we would do 2.3, which means that we have a test coming up, right? So if you follow your course outline for the assignments, uh, the list of assignments, our first test covers chapters 1 and 2. So sections 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3. We're going to finish 2-2 two, two today. Today is Wednesday. We had kind of a short week. So we'll finish 2-2 two, two today. We'll finish 2-3 on Monday, which means our first test is one week from today. So next Wednesday, we'll have a test over chapters 1 and 2, the things we've covered. Okay? Uh, there is a link on um, the YouTube page. There's a video on it, and it says, it explains exactly how to be successful on my particular test. Um, and so if you don't know where the YouTube page is, if you go to the home page of our Canvas page, uh, the list of all the documents, which you recall we went over on our first day of class, at the bottom of that list, right above your My Labs Plus login link, there is a link there that says YouTube channel or something YouTube. If you click that, that's going to take you, of course, to the YouTube channel. And that channel has every video that we've created, whether it's for this class or prior class or some other class. And so look through the videos there for one that says how to succeed on a math test or something to that effect. It explains how to be very successful on our test, which we'll review in a bit too, but um, watch it. Anybody who's followed it usually gets an A or a B in my class. They certainly pass. So um, those that don't follow it start, at least they, they're about a full grade letter lower than what they could be. So if everybody has a certain potential of success in this class, if you follow that, you'll hit that potential. I promise you, it works. Every student who's done it said, man, this is, makes it so much easier. So follow it, watch the video, uh, it'll help you immensely. It's not a very long video at all, okay? So like I said, we're gonna cover 2.2 today, which discusses subsets. And um, when we talk about subsets, we have this kind of new symbol, all right? So let's take a look. So if we create a new list of um, symbols, we have this, it looks like a C, or it almost looks like a less than or equal to sign, right? It almost looks like that. And, um, so that is the symbol that we're looking for and we're looking at or working through. And you can guess that this symbol means subset. This symbol means not a subset. Okay, well, first and foremost, what is a subset? Well, you can guess that a subset um, is if we have some large set of items, whatever they happen to be, a subset could be a group of them off to the side, but you can still find these elements in the subset in the greater set. Later on, we'll talk about the difference between a subset and a proper subset. And um, But for right now, think of something like that. So a subset, by definition, is a set of elements, set of elements that has all or some of the larger set. So you can even have them be the same, thus or hence the little what can be kind of interpreted as an equal sign, okay? So subset does not necessarily mean that there's always fewer items in that subset than the larger set. You follow me? It could be equal to, out of order, but the same. It, so in other words, it could be all the same elements or less. But what you can't have is some new element thrown in there. 
So as an example, if this is A, B, C, D, E, and F, you can't have C, E, F, and G. That is not a subset because that is just throwing some random variable that's not in the greater set. So it has to be equal to, or it has to have all, or some of the elements of the larger set. And thus, a subset of this one could be the exact same set itself. Okay? All right? We'll talk about the exact term proper subset in just a moment. We'll see it very soon. And I've already kind of laid the groundwork for it. Anyways, so anyways, with that said, all that to say that we need to select whether it's a subset, has the same or fewer elements, but nothing new, or not a subset. And we're going to read this left to right. Okay? So let's take a look. This set, left to right, has the elements 12, 3, 1. This set has all the natural numbers from 1 through 12, including 12. So would we, could we say that this set on the left is a subset of this one? Can we find 12 over here? Yes. 3 over here? Yes. 1 over here? Yes. Is there anything extra that cannot be found here? No. So yes, indeed, this is a subset. You guys understanding that? Okay. So I hope that helps you kind of understand the basic idea and some additional ins and outs of subsets. All right, let's move on to the next one. All right, um, let's take a look at number two. Select subset or not a subset for this one. Remember, you always read left to right. So as an example, like if I read the previous problem right to left, it would not be a subset. Think about the previous problem. If I had read it right to left, no way. Okay, but we always read left to right. So pay attention to that, make sure that happens. All right, with that said, let's take a look here. Negative five, zero, five are the elements within that set. Um, we need to check to see if we can find all of them within the set on the right. If we can, then it is a subset. If we cannot, or we have an extra element thrown in there, then it is not a subset of the set on the right. So let's see here, negative five is here, five is here, but zero is not. In other words, they have thrown in an extra element that cannot be found in the set on the right, therefore this would not be a subset. Got it? Questions about that? I hope you guys feel super comfortable right now, um, and if you don't, keep working with me, okay? The key is you understand the definition of subset. If you don't understand the definition, you're gonna struggle over and over again, okay? Let's take a look at the next one, number three. Um, we're gonna do the same process, read left to right, determine subset or not a subset, and go from there. So Tuesday, Thursday, is that the set consisting of Tuesday, Thursday, is that a subset of this one? Well, I can find Tuesday over here, but I can't find Thursday. And since I cannot find Thursday in that other set on the right, it is not a subset. Make sense? Okay. We doing all right? Questions at all? Okay, all right. Let's keep on rolling. You guys are doing great. Let's take a look at this next one. All right, so a little bit bigger problem, um, but same concept, <laughs> just more little details. And it says right, that, okay? So left to right, remember? Left to right. Okay. THGs and so on, in other words, the countryside broken up into individual word letters. The words broken up into individual letters to form your elements. Can you find all of them over here? Mm -hmm. And so what they're saying is, this is kind of a little bit roundabout way, is the countryside, is it a subset or is it not? So that's, in instead of saying yes or no, we select it, and let me see here, the country, I'm gonna say might be. I didn't go one-to-one -one on this, but it sort of looks like it. So I'm just moving fast and it sort of looks like it. I mean, of course, I can just pair them, right? One at a time. 
and make sure it's there. It sort of looks like it. Okay, it's a subset because at least one element in the first set is not in the second set. No, that's not right. That's the definition if it's not a subset, right? If it is a subset, at least one element in the second set is not in the first set. Do I have notes like that? I do. That doesn't look right because we're not looking right to left, right? Let's look at the next one. All of the elements in the first set are in the second set. That's looking better. That's looking like our definition of subset, isn't it? Let's just look at the last option. All of the elements in their second set, no way. We don't read right to left. So this looks like is the right answer. Let's hope it's right. There it is. Okay, so what's nice about this problem, and I like it, is that it hammers home the point of what subsets by definition need to be. Okay, if you get this one right, you understand both the symbols and the definition. And they write, it, they write that definition even better than I do. So that's very, very nice. If you want a good definition for subsets, there it is right there. All the elements in the first set are in the second, okay, or less, right? Um, but no extras. Okay, let's keep going. Um, just because you have fractions doesn't mean that the process changes. So you're still thinking about this the same way. If I have 6 over 14, 3 over 2, is that a subset of this? Now, remember, the elements have to be exact. So if you have the reciprocals of these, it's not exact. Like for example, um, if I have a set and it has triangle, square, and then I ask you, is it a subset of upside down triangle and diamond, is that true? No, it's not, because these are totally different. They have to, like, imagine that you need to literally overlay them on top of each other. The only thing that can change is the order. So if the order changes in terms of, okay, three halves is over here, six fourteenths is over here, they switch placings, that's fine. But if they literally flip, transpose, um, reciprocal, turn, rotate, that's not the same thing. So therefore, this problem is not a subset. Does that make sense? Okay, really important you understand that. I mean, it's subtle. It's not really that hard. But it's easy to look at this and go, hmm, is it or is it not? I don't know. But there you go. Now you know. All right, let's take a look here. Our old friend, the empty set. So here's where they start to kind of just throw, like, the last problem curveballs, getting you to think a little bit more abstract, critically. Let's take a look at number six. So I've got an empty set, right? And we all know that the empty set is a set that has nothing in it, okay? And they're asking you, is the empty set a subset or not a subset of the set consisting of X, Y, and Z? Well, before X, Y, and Z was in this set, what was in there? Nothing. nothing. So therefore, you should conclude that yes, it's a subset because before you put, here's your basket, you first have the basket, right? With nothing in it, which means that this is this, right? Then you add to the nothing, X, Y, Z. So technically this is nothing, X, Y, and Z, there it is. It should be a subset, okay? Got it? Okay, next. All right, now we come to a new point, and that little extra side point is known as a proper subset. Okay, so proper subset is just this symbol without the equal to. And you can guess that a proper subset by definition is a set that has the elements in the bigger set, but not all of them. So in other words, a proper subset can be everything minus all. So recall that 
a regular subset can be all and everything else that you can make in combinations. The proper subset is one less thing. That one less thing is the ability to take all of them and make a set. Are you following me? So for example, in, in our little one off to the side here, I can make combinations or little subsets of C, E, F, B, C, D, A, D, B, F, E, C. All those are considered proper subsets. But the moment I take the entire set as a subset, that's no longer a proper subset. So the, the set itself can't be considered a proper subset. So in other words, subset is just one more set that you can include in all of the little sets that you make. But if I'm referring to proper subset, it better not be the set itself. Okay, so let's look at some so that you can practice it. it kind of sometimes can be a little confusing in theory, um, but when you start to see it in practice, it helps you tie everything together. All right, with that said, let's take a look here. So. I've got a set consisting of the elements TMS, and then I've got a set consisting of the elements TMSR, we still read left to right. And so recall that a proper subset means that all of the elements in here can be found over here. Is that true? Yes, so so far we could say that this is a proper subset. Now the definition of subset was that we could find all the elements here and here, and if we wanted to, also take the whole set itself. So technically, based on our knowledge from the previous 10, 15 minutes, if I didn't give you this option, could you also say that it's this? Yes. So in this case, it's both. Does that make sense? So this could pass as a proper subset. It could also pass as a subset. The first 10 minutes of class that we just went through, we only had a choice between this or not this. This or not this. This one would pass the subset test. We just added a definition of proper subset, which says basically you just can't have the whole set itself. So anything that, you, as long as you can find it left, the left side set in the right side, you're gonna be proper. You just can't be the whole set. All right, so again, let's, let's practice more. That's gonna help you um, understand these. All right, next. This, this is always a topic that sometimes confuses students, and so um, practice, practice on this one. Okay, so again, same type of question. We got the set two consisting of two, five, eight, 11, 14. And we have the other set that consists of the elements 5, 11, 8, 2, and 14. All right, let's start at the beginning. Is this a proper subset? And the answer is no. It's not a proper subset. Why? Because proper subsets have to be less than. They have to be any element over here. Has to be able to be found over here. But you cannot have the set itself. And if I rearrange these, I end up having the entire set. So it is not a proper subset. But what is it? It's a regular subset, isn't it? Because it covers this part of it. Does that make sense, guys? In other words, think less than or less than or equal to. Very similar concepts. I just don't talk about it too much as less than, less than, or equal to because it's technically not right. So anyways, it's only a subset. It's not a proper subset. Okay, got it? Okay, let's move on. I'm glad this one came up right away because it really helps drive home the point between proper versus subset. All right, now if you look at number nine, um, what happens in nine is that they make you do the work. Instead of spoon feeding you the sets, you have to do a little extra work beforehand to then before you can make a decision. So notice this is the kind of language or symbolism that you've seen in the previous section, right? We learned that in two one. 
Um, and so this is describing a certain set of characteristics about a set. Um, it's saying all of the elements in the set must satisfy this criteria or these criteria. Criteria one is that the, the elements in this set are natural. And criteria two, at the same time, they have to be between two and five, but you don't get to include two and five. Notice there's no equal sign here. In other words, that leaves you with just the numbers three and four on that set. Agreed? Right? So if you were to construct this set in section two, one, this is what you would get. Notice how now it's expected that you are able to do it rather than that's the problem. Okay, so this is part of the problem. So now, again, reading left to right. Is the set consisting of the elements three, four, a proper subset, a subset, both, or none? So recall that the empty set is a set that has nothing in it. So there's no way that a set with something can be a proper subset. There's no way a set with something can certainly be a subset. If it's neither of these and it's not this, it's gotta be none. Does that make sense, guys? Okay, so I hope that helps you understand, hey, there is gonna be a time when I use the none. There is gonna be a time when I use the both, yes? Um, if, since we were reading left to right, in an earlier problem we had nothing is a subset of something because that something was once nothing. If these were flipped, it would yes. be a subset. It would be a subset. Nice. It would be a subset and it would be a proper subset. It would be both. Yeah. Good question. Okay. Wonderful. So the question that is being asked is, since we're reading left to right, had we had this, what would what would be the answer? Well, remember that before three four was populating that set, it was nothing. So therefore, this certainly could be a sub proper subset, and certainly it could be a subset. So it would be both. Good question. And I like this stuff. When when you bring up those questions, what it does is it expands our example base of what can happen in these, and that's great. So. Um, you've seen every single scenario now. You've seen only a proper subset. You've seen subset only. You've seen both. You've seen none, as you see in this problem. So you, you've been exposed to every scenario. Um, and so the bottom line is if you're still rusty, let's keep practicing. Okay. All right, number 10. So let's take a look here. It says stand and then it has the subset symbol, okay? Um, is an L or, or is a subset of the set consisting of all these people which Stan has to be in. Be in. So, um, initially, I think everybody, this is a trick question by the way, I think everybody is thinking, okay, certainly this is true because I can find Stan over here. And you would say, okay, because Stan is a subset of th that set. Um, and then they say, and Stan is, um, and is a subset of the given set. So the problem with this most likely you would answer it this way. The problem with this, and this is a very, very important piece, in order to do any of these subset problems, it's got to be grouped in braces. So in order to even begin your work, whatever's on the left has to be grouped in braces, and whatever has, is on the right has to be grouped in braces. When I say braces, I'm talking about the squiggly things, right? So you can't even begin to do the problem unless you are using the correct notation. And there's an extension of this as well, which we'll talk about in a moment. But this problem is invalid now. It doesn't matter that you can find Stan over here our natural thinking of going, oh yeah, it's a subset, it's a proper subset, it's both. That that's, doesn't matter now, why? Because this is not referring to Stan in a set, stand, in a set manner. 
it's referring to stand as an element. And when it does that, you are going to have to backtrack to 2, 1, and it needs to be written as this. If you're going to leave the braces off of stand and you want a true statement, it has to read like this. I'm just going to abbreviate. You guys following me? So if, and, and I guarantee you this is going to show up on your quiz, it's going to show up on your test, and there's going to be some of you who missed this. So mark this moment. It's a free problem. It literally is a free problem. Now, it might not come up like this. I'm not going to do this wording jump. But it is going to come up as a problem where you choose. Subset, not a subset, both, neither. Or subset, properties, whatever. And so you would immediately know, if you're paying attention, you remember this moment, you study, that it's not. This is not true. This is not a true statement. Why? Because you don't have the braces around it. Now, if the braces were there, this would indeed be true. You could even throw in just this symbol, and it would still be true, wouldn't it? But it's not. This is actually false as it stands because stand is not in braces. When stand is not in braces, you must use the element symbol from section 2.1. This is true. Are you guys following me? And let me give the extension now. Remember about a few minutes ago, I referred to an extension of this. If I do this, is that true now? No, and that's the trick. So they work both ways. If I mix subset notation with element symbol, it's wrong. If I mix element notation, in other words, I don't put the braces around it, with subset, it's wrong. You guys following me? Okay, really important you understand the distinction there. So this is not true in this case. But if I did Stan, Element, Stan, Kyle, Kenny, Eric, we're good there. Are you following me? Not true because the braces. True because we don't have braces. Okay, in other words, let's summarize here. To even get off the ground, if, you're see, if you see this, a subset problem, better have braces around both sides okay if you see an element notation you better have braces on the right and nothing on the left you guys follow me okay so why don't we just do a little recap right here very important start element if you see subset notation you better have braces and braces for, to even get off the ground and start talking. If you don't, it's immediately false. There's no talking. To use element symbol, you better have nothing and then braces on the right. Does that make sense? Okay, so important you get this. Guarantee it's gonna show up on your quiz. Guarantee it's gonna show up on your test. All right? Okay, very, very important problem. So anyways, all that to say, let's go see if we can get this right. I always hate these ones because sometimes they have um, trick wording. So this statement is false. And we know why now. Okay, it's false because, let's take a look, because the subset symbol means is a subset of, well that part's true, right? That symbol means is a subset of, and stand is an element of. Does that make sense? That's it right there. That should be right. Thank goodness. All right, does that make sense, guys? Questions at all? It's such an important problem. It will save you. If you get this, you will be in very, very good shape. Okay? It's probably going to end up being two out of maybe 40 questions on your next test. All right, so there it is. All right, let's move on. Now, I love number 11 because it drives on the point of what we just came off of. Can we get off the ground here? Yes, absolutely we can. 
we see the subset symbol, we see braces on the left and braces on the right, we can proceed with at least checking to see if it works. If it didn't have braces on the left, stop right there, you're done. Figure out the wording or the answer that's going to go with it. If we had an element symbol here, we're done too. Can't do it. So with that said, let's see if we can answer this qu question correctly. Is the statement true? It is true. The subset consisting of Mexico, or the set consisting of Mexico, is a subset of the set consisting of Mexico, Canada, and United States. Because this, the subset symbol means is a subset of, great. And Mexico is a subset. a subset. And notice what they did there, right? The set consisting of Mexico. Very important, look at that, they put the braces there. Whereas the previous problem, it wasn't. The set consisting of Mexico is a subset of the given set. This should be correct. Make sense, guys? Okay. Very good work. You guys are doing great. All right. Ooh. I'm going to give you a moment to think about this one. I'm going to use the restroom. Think. You have to think critically about this. Think very, very critically. All right, what's the conclusion? It's true, why? <laughs> because you picked the balls out. I was going to say, hey, you know, in the worst case, you're 50 50, you always go back. But the, que the real question is, yeah, it is true, but the question is, why? Why is it true? Um, let's understand why this is true, even though we see braces. It seems to violate what we just put over here, but in reality, it doesn't. And let's explain why. It doesn't violate it because braces nine is the element. So notice what's going on here. This is braces nine. Just like as an example, if I had triangle, triangle, it's an element of the set <coughs> triangle, triangle. That's the actual thing. So it's the object. In this case, you wanna think of it like the braces in this case represent like an object. The object is a braces nine. And so by putting, because they use braces here, they're saying that this whole object is the element. This whole braces 11 
is the element. Therefore, the element braces nine is an element of the set consisting of the elements braces nine and braces 11. You guys follow me? Really, really tricky. Now, let's pause for a moment and let's answer this follow-up question. Is this still true? No, it's not. Because now all of a sudden, because I put braces around the element braces nine, we are now talking subset, subset notation. And I've got element. Does that make sense? Okay, so important. Um, it's good that you guys thought through this or at least 50 50 did, and then at least got the right answer. So now you know. This will show up for sure on your quiz and test. Okay, let's look at 13. Determine whether the given statement is true or false. Okay, so we have a set consisting of the elements 5 and 10. We have a set consisting of the elements 10 and 5. Um, is that not a subset of that? So in other words, they're claiming, the claim is that the set 510 is not a subset of the set 105. This is false. false. It is. It is actually true, right? It's true. That's what it would be. So it is false the way it is. Okay. All right. All right. Let's see what 14. All right. List all the subsets of the given set. So um, let me help you do this. So we've got the set B, O, Z. And what they want you to do is they want to do what I kind of referred to about 20 minutes ago, and that is you can make all different combinations, right? Let me show you a method, methodical way of doing this, right? So first is you've got the empty set. Start simple, right? Start simple. Then we have the individual elements themselves. You guys following me? Okay, so you can, all your subsets can be, and we learned that the empty set can be a subset. We learned that about 10 minutes ago. And then we learned that each individual element could be a subset. Then let's start pairing them. Let's do twos. B, O. What else? B, Z. What else? O, Z. So what have I done so far? I've got the empty set. I've got the singles. I've got the doubles. Okay, now let's go to the triples, right? Can we do B, O, Z? Sure we can, right? And now my question is, can I switch up the order and it still be a subset? Yeah, but does that count as another set? No, or subset. So that looks like it's it, unless somebody can think of something else. Because if I go do O, B, Z, Yes, the order has changed, but recall that the order can change and it's still the same thing. So all that matters is that you get a set with all three of them there, and that looks like it's everything. So we've got O, B, O, Z, B, O, B, Z, O, Z, but they forgot the B, O, Z. I've got to find out the one that had it. Looks like this one might be empty. B, O, Z, B, O, B, Z, O, Z, here it is. And each of the others is going to miss um, one of the things that should be on that list. Okay? Questions about that? What are the ones that are easiest to make a mistake on and miss? Empty set. That one is easy to miss. What else is easy to potentially miss? The set itself. I think a lot of people would probably do really well with the individuals and the doubles, the pairs. But it's super easy, and sure enough, they have a couple of your answer choices that leave off the empty set and leave off the set itself. <clears throat> All right, so there it is. Make sure you do a good job there. Pay attention to that. That will probably show up. Okay, um, so now let's talk about kind of like the last topic in the section, or we're almost to the, I think this is the last topic. Might have one more. For the given set, first calculate the number of subsets for the set, then calculate the number of proper subsets. Stop for a moment. You don't have to go and do what we just did. There's a formula for figuring out what we just did a moment ago. 
you don't actually have to list out. If all that you want to know is how many could I possibly make? Like for example, let's go back to the previous problem. So in the come on. So in the previous problem, we know that C was the correct answer. Everybody agree? In other words, there were one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight sets that could be created, or eight subsets that could be created from this set. If all I wanted to know was this part, and I wasn't concerned with the actual subsets themselves, there's a formula for calculating that. And the formula for calculating the number of subsets is two to the n number of elements in the set. So for example, if I wanna know how many subsets there are, how many I can create, I take the number two and I raise it to the number of elements in my set. How many are there? One, two, three. That is how I get that three there. I count the number of individual elements in the set. That's my exponent. And sure enough, what's two to the third? It's eight. Does that make sense? What's the difference between a subset and a proper subset? We just don't have the set itself. So if I wanna know, because the next problem that I just came to and then returned from, said first calculate the number of subsets that you can create. Then calculate the number of proper subsets. Well, we know that proper subsets is simply one less because you just don't get to count the set itself. So proper subsets simply is one less because you don't get to count the set itself. So in other words, I have eight subsets that I can create from that, and I have eight proper subsets that I, or seven proper subsets that I can create from that. Make sense? Okay. And so, do you really need to memorize two to the n minus one? No, just remember proper subsets is one less. Okay, you don't have to recalculate two to the n, you already did it. Okay, so sure enough, right? If I don't get to count the set itself, I can only make seven sets, proper subsets. All right, so hopefully that helps you with that um, and you've got a better grasp of it. So I'm not gonna do number 15. Um, I'm gonna probably try to do 16. Yeah, let's do 16, which is same thing, different number of elements. So, um, well, let's do that. Uh, fill in our blocks here. Okay, so if I want to know or determine the number of subsets that I have for this one, I know that 2 to the n power, where n is the number of elements in my set, that is going to tell me. So in my, my set right here, mine, yours might be different, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So therefore, I have 2, I'll do this this way, 2 to the 5th. What's 2 to the 5th? 2 to the 3rd is 8, 2 to the 4th is 16, 2 to the 5th is 32. I have 32 subsets that I can create. So if I go and list it out, empty set, 2, 11, 13, 6, 17, 2, 11, 2, 13, 2, 6, 2, 17, and so on, I have 32 that I can make. And then they follow that up with how many proper subsets, which is just one less because you don't get to have the set itself that has all five of the elements in, in this case. Make sense? Questions at all? You guys might be able to finish your homework and quiz in today's class. And it's Wednesday, so you might not even have any math homework over the weekend. All right? Now, what is the difference here in number 17? What's going on in 17? 17 is just them not spoon feeding you the set itself. You need to first build the set before you can calculate the subsets and proper subsets. Are you guys following me? So instead of them saying, okay, it's, you know, all these elements, 
go figure it out, you first have to do a little bit of work. Which is it really that hard? No, that's just section two one, which um, many of you did a fantastic job on on your homework and quiz. So let's take a look at the criteria. All the elements in the set must be natural, and at the same time, they have to be um, between five and nine, not including five or nine, okay? And so what does that leave us with? Six, seven, eight. Well, that means that we only have, six, seven, yes, we only have three elements in there, which is the exact same number as two problems ago. So that's two to the third, which is eight subsets and seven proper subsets, okay? So building the set was review. We did that last class. We did it once in this class. And then the new part is the calculation for subsets and proper subsets. Okay, so here's the last topic and we'll be all done. Uh, and it's some word problems. They're not really that tough, but we do have to think a little bit through them to ensure that we um, you get the right answer. It takes a little bit of extra thinking. Let's see if we can think a little more critically to complete this. All right, so everybody with me on number 18. Here we go. Um, so what this is showing is we've got 1,400 um, Americans who have piercings per every 10,000. For every 10,000 uh, adults, in general, statistically, is what this is claiming, that 1,400 of them have a piercing of some sort, okay? Of those 1,400 people who have piercings, so survey 10,000 adults, 1,400 of those adults have piercings. Of the 1,400, 572 are Democrats, 446 are Republicans, 382 are Independents, follow me? Subset, subset, subset. Of the Democrats, 295 are men who are Democrats who have piercings. 277 are women who are Democrats who have piercings. And so on, and so on. You guys follow me? So now you understand, hopefully, how this is working. In other words, these are little subsets that they're creating in a different scenario. All right. So um, they're saying... And you, I think you gotta read the variables here, so scroll down a little bit. It says, P is the set of pierced Americans, R is the set of pierced Republicans, D is the set of pierced Democrats, M is the set of pierced Republican men, and W, Republican women. Okay, fine. Determine whether, and so we got a general idea of what's going on here, okay? Determine whether the following statement is true or false. If the statement is false, make the necessary changes to produce a true statement. R is a proper subset of P. Let's write this out. So what is R? Let's go to our little key here. R is the set of Pierce Republicans. So they're saying the set of Pierce Republicans is a proper subset of P. What's P? Set of pierced, set of pierced Americans in general. Okay, that's the claim. That's what we're having to answer, and we're going to need to use our chart. We use the key to identify and create the statement. We need to use the chart to understand or determine if the statement is true or false. If it's true, Pierce Republicans should be a proper subset of Americans. And just looking at that, I think it's probably going to be fine, right? Pierce Republicans is where? Right here. And as long as it's what? Less than this or can be found in this, Pierce Americans, then we're good. Is that true? Yes. Pierce Republicans are underneath. Even though this chart goes left to right, it's actually technically breaking down like this. So Pierce Republicans is contained within the 446 Pierce Republicans are contained within the 1400 Pierce Americans. This is true. Does that make sense, everybody? Okay. And so there it is. Um, done with that one. I'm not going to do number 19. That's for you to do on your own time. 
Um, and then number 20, you can do on your own time as well, and that does it. Okay, so um, before the next class, you want to complete 2 2 homework and quiz. And know that next class will cover 2 3, and then we will have our test um, after that.